August 6, 2020, marked the 75th anniversary of the bombing of Hiroshima. Today, August 9th, is the 75th anniversary of the bombing of Nagasaki. With those bombings, the United States became the only country in history to use atomic weapons against an enemy. That is a fact which has found its way into political arguments ever since, about the bombings, obviously, and the use of nuclear weaponry, but also about many other often unrelated subjects. Because of everything associated with the bombings, I think they're worth talking about. August 6, 1945. The United States has been at war with Japan for 1,338 days. Japan has been at war for far longer than that since the invasion of Manchuria on September 18, 1931, a total of 5,071 days. At 8.15 a.m., an American bomber named the Enola Gay dropped the 9,700-pound Little Boy bomb on Hiroshima, a port city of 345,000 people. By the end of the day, some 70,000 of those people would be dead. By the end of 1945, the death toll would climb to 166,000. Three days later, at 11.02 a.m., another American bomber named the Boxcar dropped the 10,300-pound Fat Man bomb on Nagasaki, another port city of 263,000 people. 60,000 people died that day in Nagasaki. By the end of 1945, that number rose to over 80,000. It took six days after the Nagasaki bombing to arrange the formal surrender of Japan. It's long been a staple of lore concerning these bombings that Japan was informed that Tokyo was the next target, and that this was a bluff aimed at Emperor Hirohito, as there was no third bomb available, and the Japanese worshipped their emperor as a living god. Declassified documents have revealed that General Leslie Groves, head of the Manhattan Project, was in the process of assembling a second Fat Man-type bomb for use on or after August 19th, and that he promised to deliver three more Fat Man-type bombs each in September and October. Thus, this threat was no bluff, although stating that Tokyo and Hirohito were considered legitimate targets probably hastened the surrender of Japan. The highest casualty estimates list 226,000 deaths due to these two bombings, 90% of whom were civilians. A further 650,000 plus are recognized as Hibakusha, the survivors of these bombings. Memorials in Hiroshima and Nagasaki list all of the Hibakusha who have since died. Updated annually, these memorials contain 501,787 names, including the names of people who fled from Hiroshima to Nagasaki and survived both bombings. The first, and so far only, of these Niju Hibakusha was recognized by the Japanese government in 2009. Sutomo Yamaguchi, a marine engineer who died in 2010 of stomach cancer. Should the United States have dropped these bombs? We've been debating this question ever since. The plans for Operation Downfall, the invasion of Japan, estimated that U.S. military casualties would be between 250,000 and 1 million. A study conducted by the Joint Chiefs of Staff in April 1945 projected 1.6 million Allied casualties with 380,000 fatalities from the planned invasion. They also anticipated, based on the casualty figures from the invasions of Iwo Jima, Saipan, and Okinawa, that a ratio of 22 to 1 was expected between Japanese casualties and Allied casualties. Some estimates in early 1945 projected that Japan would suffer up to 10 million killed in the planned invasion. Japan was already suffering, too. The strategic bombing campaign had killed up to half a million people already, with most of the Japanese industrial sites flattened. Coastal bombardments preparatory to the invasion of Japan had killed thousands more. The bombs would kill far fewer people on both sides. That was the justification given for dropping them at the time. That's what the intelligence given to the people who made the decision to drop these bombs said, and to my thinking, that's what standard on which we have to judge these people's decisions. Each of us individually must decide whether their decisions were justified. I'm not going to dictate what others must decide in this matter. I will, however, point out a couple of facts. Hiroshima and Nagasaki have both been rebuilt and have a far higher population than they did at the time of the bombings. World War II ended much more swiftly than expected. 
Japan has resumed her place among the powerhouse nations of the world through her economic strength, thanks in part to the United States helping them to rebuild during the occupation. And one other thing, over the last 75 years, no other nation has ever used an atomic bomb or nuclear warhead. Wars have been fought and nuclear weapons have been built, but never again have those weapons been used in those wars. We should keep that in mind even as we honor the memory of the victims of Hiroshima and Nagasaki.